So today we have with us Andy Buckles, and he and I are going to be talking a little bit about um, the printer that we have, the business case, and uh, ways that you might actually leverage uh, direct-to-garment printing for your own uh, sign and large format printing business. We're going to cover a couple of things here, talking about, first of all, the direct-to-garment industry and the addressable market and how it is similar uh, and different to the sign market. We'll talk about some common challenges that are between direct-to-garment printing and sign business. We'll go into a little bit of product detail on the Empower and the Sprint digital apparel printers and talk about a business case, about how you would calculate you know, a, a good uh, justification for looking at this business. And we'll go in-depth with Andy's business at Eastern Shore Signs. We will mention briefly who's not really a fit, strong fit for directed garment. And then we'll have a Q&A session. And hopefully, we'll have lots of questions that you could provide us uh, as we're going through this. We really uh, would like to get you know, any type of questions that we can get into the chat window. Feel free to send it while we're talking. So I already wanted to introduce uh, Andrew Buc Andy Buckholz and thank him for joining us again. Uh, we talked about this time last year. He's the owner of Eastern Shore Sign out in Cape Charles, Virginia. He's been in business for 25 plus years and he's very expert in vinyl and inkjet printers. Uh, and he's been an owner for with Anajet since February of 12. And me, I've been with Anajet for two and a half, going on three years. Uh, and I actually also own a direct to garment printer myself and use it for a home-based business. So why would somebody want to look at direct to garment as, a, as a, an add-on to their existing business? One of the trends that has been noticed in recent years is that uh, there's a greater demand for uh, smaller runs of custom printed garments, including polos and t-shirts, particularly strong around t-shirts. And one of the things that uh, Andy can attest to and that you probably have experienced yourself is that if you don't have a diverse product line, your, your customers tend to wither away a bit and you have to outsource quite a bit. Another reason why people tend to look at adding on new technologies to any imaging shop is that there's always pricing pressure on every one of your product and service offerings. Even if you're the only game in town, people are still coming to you with a high degree of price sensitivity around certain things. And having the capacity to produce something for a person on demand that is to their liking, to their specification, sometimes even while they wait, really erodes that price sensitivity. There's also a lot more competition for your, um, for your customers coming through all different vehicles, including the web and email and social media. So there's tons of pressure for you to uh, to expose all the different service and product offerings that you have, to uh, be competitive and be perceived as the service leader, so that when it comes time to talk about price, folks don't balk at the uh, price quotes that you're giving. And lastly, there are other imaging businesses, such as screen printing and promotional products. In all of these, the, the key is to differentiate or die. So why would a person look at directed garment specifically? Well, it's a huge industry. Um, it may be something that you've, you've, you've looked at in the past, but didn't really see that, that there are dollar signs attached to it. But in reality, it is a $23 billion industry, the garment printing industry in the United States specifically the garment printing industry. And that's including everything, every method that's out there, including screen printing, uh, direct to garment, dye sublimation, um, and um, any other uh, type of technology that applies an image to, to a garment that's ready made. So as of 2007, we had data that told us that right now the industry is 99% screen printing and 1% digital direct printing. We believe that the number has moved up slightly, perhaps to the 2 or 3% range. And as you can see, there are some examples uh, of some really nicely done digitally printed garments below that. Some of the challenges in the imaging industry is that production equipment is costly, uh, and unless you're buying used, and then that's a dicey proposition. Uh, <laughs> there, there's always a learning curve when you're we're pick, picking up new technologies, uh, even if it's something that's parallel to what you're doing right now. There are um, a demand for smaller job sizes. So there's also going to be a demand for the high volume, high production jobs. But there's also uh, um, a constant need for one-offs 
The problem there is that you're looking at much smaller margins because you're not able to simply repeat the job that you've done. There's um, a pressure to always attract new clients. And as we mentioned earlier, you need to differentiate and have a customer service uh, uh, factor that draws people in and keeps them customers and keeps them referring you. And when it comes time to, to look at things that you can't do, you're, you're constantly outsourcing. So uh, <laughs> it, it adds to the pressure and it limits the, amount, uh, limits the number and range of products that you can offer. So a solution that we propose is that you're looking into a direct-to-garment printer that can produce in high volume. And right here you can see side by side. This is actually inside of Sue Asplund's trailer. Um, she owns uh, a, a mobile sign shop, mobile sign business, and uh, a direct-to-garment shirt business. So um, it's really easy to learn uh, how to run the MJet printer if you're already experienced in inkjet. And the profit margins can be quite high. Now, I have this number up here, 75%. Not just, uh, I'm not just blowing hot air here. We had a, a customer who came to me, uh, Henry Lando up in Princeton. Andy, I don't know if you're familiar with Henry. Okay, I think I may have lost Andy. <laughs> I'll get him back. Um, he had uh, $70,000 worth of product uh, that he printed within um, three months. And he reported that he had a 68% margin, which is fantastic. So let me just make sure that I can get the any book. Andy, are you there? OK. We'll get him back in just a moment. So um, he had a 75% margin. Hey, all right. I thought I'd lost you there. Uh, yeah, I think I clicked on mute myself. I muted myself. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're. We're really ex ex skilled here with webinars, folks, honestly. Um, <laughs> when you have a direct to printer, one of the things I'm going to mention a little bit later on is that if you have a sampling strategy, you can actually hand a person a printed shirt to go along with the, their fulfilled order that puts their logo, their brand, their image, whatever it may be, onto a shirt. And what that does is that spurs more referrals, and um, uh, it, 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 it really sets you apart from your, your competition, and that's a differentiating factor. With the direct garment machine, you also have very quick turnaround and high degree of personalization. And you know, lest, lest we forget, you're also dealing with uh, um, no more outsourcing. So you're getting rid of middlemen, you're getting rid of lead times, and you're servicing those customers a lot faster. So some unique advantages is that when it comes to inkjet, uh, the maintenance routine is almost identical. Um, you have similar graphic software. So if you work with RIP software, guess what? We have a RIP software as well. When you can uh, serve people with multiple product lines, you're acting more as a one-stop shop. You can dial up the margins a little bit better. And it takes up a very minimal footprint. Uh, I think, Andy, you could attest to the amount of shop space that you need. Yeah, actually, I did. I moved into a new shop, so I went from a 350 square foot facility to about a thousand. So yeah, uh, it was uh, it was uh, it was challenging, but you know the footprint on this was perfect. It was ideal for that because right, right. I just had it in one location. Well, what, I I talked with a, um, another customer who actually had one of these printers up in his storefront, and he calculated that he was using about 80 square feet total for um, the presence in his storefront, and then he used another 100, 150 square feet for storing all the blank shirts in his basement. Hmm. So, so uh, yeah, it was it was taking up very little space, and he kept a lot of blanks on hand, which is really surprising. Some of some folks don't keep that many blanks on hand. Um, so, I already mentioned about differentiation, and another very important thing is if you're trying to to justify purchase, you you're and you're a smart business person, you're always looking at how much time is it going to take me to pay this thing off. And some folks stretch their payoff over three years. Some folks expect it really fast, like in 12 months. But in Andy's case and in a lot of other um, owners' cases, they're seeing payoff for their investments in 90 days, 120 days. Does that sound about right? Yeah, it's more like the 120-day mark for me. Yeah. So it's a pretty rapid payoff. 
Um, and this is the kind of uh, product that you actually produce. This is one example of uh, a shirt that Chuck Northcutt did. And he had uh, 250 pieces. So it was a, a custom order. And uh, he priced, he quoted this at $13 per shirt. And he got 13 bucks per shirt. I was blown away. And he was able to produce this in about five hours. Um, so it, it's when you have the right order and you have the right customer and it comes together like that, it's very, very nice. It's a something like a $2,700 margin that he 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 came away with uh, on this one order. So the inks are pretty good. They're very brilliant, and and when you press it, uh, when you cure the shirt, that ink actually becomes part of the shirt. So what, if you reached out and you could actually feel that shirt, you would not be able to tell where the ink starts and where the fabric uh, ends because that ink has, it's almost like dye sublimation. It, it really has become part of the shirt and it's permanently in there. Um, and the way to make it last longer, of course, is just like with any decorated garment, you have your customers take care of it and wash it in cold water, especially when it comes to the dark shirts or black shirts. So um, the, the machine that Andy's using is the Empower. We say that it's the fastest direct garment printer in its class, and it has a very quick return on investment. We also happen to offer at Anajet uh, um, lifetime technical support and training. The training is free. And you don't have to print just on shirts. There's uh, many different other possibilities. There's um, uh, any any flat substrate, basically, that you can apply pretreatment to and cure it, you can print with this machine. We've had folks print onto uh, canvas. Canvas works really well. Uh, all types of natural fibers work really well. Canvas bags, in fact, they've even got a picture of one of Andy's customers, one of Andy's jobs where he's printed on a canvas bag. And the Empower, uh, as well as the Sprint, are designed, engineered, uh, assembled, su sold, supported, all out of our headquarters in Costa Mesa, California. So that makes it nice if uh, when it comes time to get support, you know that even if you're on the East Coast, uh, you dial in at 10.05 uh, your time, we got somebody here who's answering the phones at 7.05 a.m. our time. So that's five days a week. Um, some advances that we've done recently and uh, I really want to, to push on this because we have uh, been uh, we've been producing the Empower for two years plus here at, at Anajet, and we've had a lot of customers pick it up, and it's been very, very popular. But we decided that we wanted to enhance it even further after two years, and we went in and rearranged some things and improved some some components, and we wound up discovering that we could achieve an even better ink flow uh, with a new configuration. So we have a patented, now we actually have a patented closed loop ink delivery system uh, that's been patented. So um, what that does is it prevents the ink from dehydrating. I don't know if you've ever experienced this as a sign maker, but uh, if you don't have good humidity control and you're controlling your airflow, you're going to wind up with banding. Uh, you also might wind up with a lot of block nozzles on your print heads. And so one of the methods that we uh, invented to try to deal with that is to have a closed loop ink delivery system to keep that, that ink delivery airtight as much as possible. So some other enhancements that have been made with the I-Series is that the fill is faster. That's uh, important when you first get the printer, but it's also important when you are doing a flush, uh, which we recommend about once every month, couple months, maybe more frequently if you're printing in very high volumes. Uh, you get better ink flow while printing, of course, uh, avoiding the banding and the color dropouts. Uh, you get better print quality, and the, f the color fidelity now with the when we're just taking an image and ripping it completely with default settings, you're looking at excellent, excellent color fidelity. Now we don't have Pantone matching, um, so that's not something that we that we uh, um, that we claim to have, but uh, you stack up a sample against an image that you have on the screen, and it's really, really strong fidelity between the two. Um, and then you also have, uh, now we have less ink and, and less ink consumption when we're doing flushes and fills. So all this added together equals a lower cost of ownership. Some of the components that we changed, we um, swapped over to some different valves. 
we have an improved maintenance station. The maintenance station is very important to make sure that uh, when your print head's not being used, that it has an airtight seal to keep it from drying out. And if you're familiar with the Empower, there's some other enhancements that we've made. Andy, did you have anything else on this? No, yeah, the improvements have tremendously helped out. That's good. Cool. Um, we also may have made continuous improvements to Anarip, and that's, uh, for those of you that don't know, we have a proprietary RIP software, software that we designed after six years of working with uh, different RIPs. And we add a super fine print mode. It goes a little bit slower, and it lays down a lot more ink. Um, and that can also help you if uh, you have, uh, if, if, you know, you know, God forbid that you've, you've abused your machine a little bit or left it uh, sitting for seven or eight days without doing even a nozzle check. But that, sometimes that happens. But if you have super fine print mode, that can actually bail you out of a uh, sticky situation. But it also, if, if your, your machine is already running optimally, it gives you a really super saturated uh, um, application of the ink. So um, why is this important? Why is the I-Series such a vast improvement, and why is it so important? Well, um, we had, we had uh, customers coming to us saying, hey, I'm having a dropout, I'm having banding issues. And so we spent six months, and we did tens of thousands of uh, impressions of, of tests, and going in there and tweaking every last thing to get to this point. So really, it just it, it carries on from where we started with the Empower. And uh, we're continuing with all of the different offerings that we had before. What's, uh, what's also nice is if you're looking at other direct garment systems, we don't have any hidden setup fees for it. There's, there's nothing where we say, OK, and we're going to charge you. On top of your purchase, you've got to come up with $1,500 or $2,000 for us to send a person on site to install it and train you. Uh, you can set it up yourself. You can attend our um, upcoming online training that we're going to be publishing very soon. You can come to Costa Mesa, you know, buy a plane ticket, and pay for a night at a hotel and attend our training. And we don't charge you for that. Uh, you can send three, five, six people if you have different multiple operators. So there's no mandatory site visits or setup fees. And so we don't believe anybody else can offer what we do, what we actually deliver. I mentioned the Interrip software. This is just a little sneak peek inside. Um, and uh, you can see that we have a view of the original image uh, on the left side. And on the right side is what we call our WYSIWYG. It's our true view, which takes into account the background color or the substrate that you're printing on. Um, the fact that it's fabric should tell you that, well, some of that ink may be uh, picked up by the, some of the brightness of the ink may be picked up in the fabric. So you can actually go in and make adjustments to your, your underbase, your white underbase, and to the brightness or the contrast. Uh, and you can go by color. There's actually different independent color sliders that you can adjust them up or down to what you, whatever you need. We have a built-in ink cost calculator. There's automatic background strikeout, which is incredibly useful um, because it saves you from having to go into Photoshop or Illustrator and actually knock out a background. You can, you can usually do it nine times out of 10 right within the RIP software. So on the printer itself, you can see there's a little preview window. That's a close-up of the actual uh, printer. Uh, there's a console right on the front of it. What kind of speeds are we looking at? Well, for folks who are interested in speeds and feeds, uh, we're talking about about 20 seconds plus 20 seconds of overhead when you're printing on a white shirt on an MP10. Um, now that's at uh, using uh, draft mode. No, that's not using draft mode. Sorry, that's using um, speed mode. And then the MP5 uh, in speed is uh, um, about 40 seconds. Why is there a difference? Well, the five. Andy, you used, used to have a five. Now you're on a ten. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, de definitely. Yeah, definitely had a five, and that's one of the reasons why I went up to a ten, just for, just, just for general, trying to get the work out faster. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Do you also? Uh, how many? You have one heat press or two heat presses? Uh, two. Okay. So, you know, looking at these print times, you know. Uh, is, it, is it fair to say that you, 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 you probably are best off having two heat presses if you're going to be running in production? Oh, on light garments, definitely. On the yeah. darker, not, not necessarily. And, right. and it, it, it all depends on, 
the, the complete size of the image. If you're doing like a 12 by 12, you'd get away with one heat press. But if you're getting away with a 3 by 3 pocket print, two, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of the speed of the machine. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and so I, what I tried to do is when I was throwing up these, these different times is I was trying to actually be very realistic and say, here's what well, you, you can expect to get. Yeah, you, you said know? the right thing because even though it's 20 seconds, you do have 20 seconds extra to put on a shirt. So yep. Yep. realistically, you're still going to be able to get about 60 shirts easily. Right, an right, hour. right. Yeah. So, um, and, and uh, what we... What we want to do is we want to give people the real, you know, the realistic expectations, um, and uh, so that they don't say, "Oh, you know, I, I can't do uh, 300,000 shirts in a year. That's impossible." And there's no time for actually adjusting things or doing the rip or whatever. So I have had um, customers come to me and say, "You know, I can realistically achieve 500 uh, prints a day on the MP10." So then I take that and I multiply that times 20. Um, and so I, that's how I get to these these approximations. Mm -hmm. If I could do five hundred, you know, if I could do five hundred shirts in a day, and I'm working five days a week, and uh, you know, that's twenty days in a month. So you won't be doing many signs. <laughs> no, you won't be doing many signs. You're going to be very busy fulfilling short orders, but oh, or are, someone's going to be doing a lot of short orders. <laughs> <laughs> but these are these are real. These are achievable and realistic. And um, something that I can disclose to you is that we do have customers who are. Um, multi-million dollar shops that are running three shifts and they're using uh, multiple um, MP10s and MP5s. So they're running this machine in three shifts. So all these estimates that we're looking at here running 100,000 to 200,000 shirts a year, try, try 100,000 shirts in a quarter on one machine and, and your mind will explode at how much you, know, you could potentially make if you were running a, a serious production shop with, with one-off or like quarters of five shirts or one shirt. So that's what happens. So um, just a quick uh, glance at the Sprint. This is the number one selling direct to government printer in the United States, potentially uh, in the world. We launched it in June of 2009. It's now on a second generation. Uh, we say that the Sprint, prior to the Empire, had the least amount of maintenance of any printer. Now you may know that this is a um, a different technology because it's using a different print head. Um, and this is just a single head with uh, eight channels. Um, but it, it runs really well and it's really durable. And I have customers who've been running the old FP, pardon me, for six years. So it has a lot of longevity to it when it's properly maintained and when you use it to print a shirt a day. So you could get very fast uh, ROI on this. Um, some customers have actually paid for this said that it paid for itself in a matter of weeks. So we're, we're also selling the Sprint. And these are some of the speeds. Uh, admittedly, it's slower than the Empower, but if you can pay for it in about 1,500 uh, shirts at retail and you're printing 20,000 shirts a year, you can, you can see that it's uh, uh, highly economical. So what's the business case that we were talking about? Um, this is it, where you want to calculate all right, how, how much could I potentially make and how would I actually pay this off? If you haven't looked at uh, um, printing garments previously, well, uh, you should know that the, the cost of a blank can range between $1.50 up to $6. It really depends on the quantity and the supplier and the nature of the shirt. I tend to be very conservative and say I don't want to spend more than $2, maybe $2.50 on a blank. Um, and I want to retail these. If I'm going to be retailing them, I have a storefront. I want to be retailing them for no less than $13 to $18. Black shirts, I want to charge more. I'm going to add a surcharge, maybe make it $20 to start for a black shirt. Um, my gross profit I'm aiming for is I'm aiming for 70, 70 to 75% margin on the retail customers. Now, Andy, you're not seeing 70 to 80% margins, are you? No. Yeah. I, 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 deal, I, deal, I do a lot of wholesale, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. Um, I deal with uh, you know just the per per cost shirt. My average on on it is around twelve, ten to twelve. And occasionally I'll do some pretty hefty duty runs. Uh, I'm getting ready to pick up an account that deals with um, 
uh, the, the YMCA, so we'll see where that goes. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, I've been generally doing a lot more wholesale. But I, I'll get the, still the one, the two, three shirts, and, I'm, you know, I'm selling those for 15 easily. Okay. okay. So I, I got, I mean, my margins are pretty good. That's awesome. Well, uh, so uh, overall, uh, across the whole business, um, do you have any estimate as to what your, your typical margin is for the whole business? Uh, well, put it this way: since I've had it, I just I just ran these numbers by mm -hmm. what you were talking. I've done this is I, I'm I'm basically a one man shop, and I do have a part time employee, so everybody knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. I've done basically twelve thousand three hundred thirty nine shirts and little. Almost a little less than a year and three quarters, or mm -hmm. somewhere in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and gross sales were one hundred three thousand, basically one hundred four thousand dollars. Right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. So it's you know, and and I'm in a very small populated area. But the county I live in, it's twelve thousand people, and right. that's where most of my business comes from. Awesome. Okay. Um, so I think I mentioned before that we talked about a payoff of about 1,500 shirts for a sprint, about 2,500 shirts on a 5, and about 3,500 shirts on an MP10. Um, and then that, that's based on the above model that I, that I described. Um, and again, production capacity, you, you have a very wide range in what you could do, what you could output in a year, uh, assuming that you're working five days a week. Um, so. How does somebody uh, achieve these numbers and, and, and uh, get to where Andy's talking about? It, it comes from making sure that you have a good quality substrate, that you know how to use the printer, um, that uh, you're, running, you're running shirts. Uh, even when you don't have orders, you're running the printer to make sure that it's working correctly. Um, and trying to make it so that your production method is efficient. So some folks, for example, uh, they don't have their shop arranged really well for really conducive for fast production you can you can change that and um, you know another thing that is conducive to efficient production is have a second heat press uh, and Andy's living proof that if you have a second heat press and you're running a, a, a large order of white shirts you can be done with it in almost half the time if you have two heat presses I actually put a demo video up I don't know if you saw this Andy where yeah it did. we we had so many challenges us to say there's no way you could print a hundred shirts in an hour and I said you, you want to bet so we, we, we. Uh, I said, give me your image, and the guy sent me a 13 by 13 square, which is a little larger than what we test on. So um, we did, fit, we had 25 shirts in a little bit less than 18 minutes, and I was using his image, and we took pictures of it and showed it to him, and um, he was satisfied that that we could do 100 shirts in an hour, but we did that with two heat presses. So he two people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had great people. A great you know, set up time. <laughs> yeah, the set up time to, to load the shirt and then to bring the shirt over to the heat press. You got one person loading shirts while the other one's doing the pressing. It's very efficient. But uh, when you figure if you're paying somebody what uh, minimum wage, uh, you know, in your shop to help you out from time to time with a big order, it's it pays for itself quickly. Uh, this was. Uh, this was the, uh, the customer I mentioned before, Henry. He was talking to me about that 70% margin. So he had, uh, in three months, he correct that, he said in three months he did 70,000 gross sales. And he had a 68% margin. I actually looked at his books. He showed it to me when I went to visit up, up in Princeton uh, last month. So this is a, a fellow who started with a sprint, and um, he has upgraded now to a 5i. And uh, you can see the volumes that he's producing. He did. Uh, he, he actually keeps a very religious count with his accounting system of the kind of volumes that he's doing. So he did 2,000 shirts in three weeks, and he's very happy with the printer. This is just another customer. I already mentioned this one. I showed you this graphic. Chuck uh, pulled a $2,790 gross margin off of this. And this is the one that we really want to talk about, Mr. Andy Buckholz. Um, so he started off with uh, an Empower Five. So Andy, um, tell me, you know, in general, you know, about how long you've been running your shop, and uh, tell me about Cape Charles. And uh, you know, you've told me many times it's a very small rural area. 
Yeah, it, it's definitely small. Um, basically, it's, it goes back to your first slide, really, in a nutshell. It's feast or famine. Basically, where I live, you know, trying to do sign, I do signs, canvas prints, product labels, you name it. Um, so I was looking for another avenue for revenue and I ended up stumbling upon direct to garment and did a bunch of research on all the all the equipment that was out there and I just have been in this industry at least printing industry for so long I knew what I was getting into on the first generation on these machines so this was probably the best thing I've ever done because my profits or my my revenue basically really jumped up I know you got 35 percent at one point it was 50 percent of the business but overall it's it's about a third of the business right now, so it was just another avenue for me to, you know, generate more money. Um, I did have competition around here, believe it or not. So I got someone less than, you know, 30 miles away, and that's pretty close when you're talking about rural America. Um, yep. That uh, they have a similar thing, but it's all about it's all about uh, basically customer service and dealing with it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I've been able to take, uh, like, for instance, the Black Drum Tournament. Not only did I do the shirts, I did all the signage for it. So not only that that image right there went on a bunch of core plus signs, uh, banners, and a few other things. So I was basically able to just reproduce everything, and it all looked very much very, very similar. Mm -hmm. So it, it was pretty much, you know, I knew what I was getting into, and I had no idea where it was going to take me. I, I had no idea that I was going to be doing, for me, twelve thousand shirts and little over, uh, little over or little less than two years is it, it just blew me away. And mm -hmm. What kind of what kind of uh, what kind of uh, um, experiences have you had? Where were what what tell me about the process when somebody comes in to you and says. I want to order a sign or a banner, or I'm, I'm like a restaurant and I want to order a bunch of menus, and you say, by the way, do you also need any t-shirts or polo shirts printed? Oh, I didn't, I, I didn't even have to do that, because when they came in, it's like, oh, you do t-shirts too. Yeah. That was the first thing that came out of their mouth. So I took it on basically a social marketing is how I ended up producing and picking up so many customers you know, through Facebook mm -hmm. page. Basically, I was able to do a shirt and tag a bunch of people. Like, if like the the black drum was a perfect example. I basically was able to tag every one of those companies, and they have their following. So it was just a matter of time. And you know, I, I get quite a bit of repeat business from just about every business that I deal with on the shore. Um, I did have one thing that. Um, I did lose one job to the Chamber of Commerce because oh. they wanted poly 100% polyester shirts, which oh. as of a few months ago, that was pretty much kind of hard to do. And mm -hmm. they do have, there is a product that is called uh, the uh, Poly Prime, which basically would have worked perfectly fine because it was all on white shirts. So it would have been able to do the job, oh. but it, had, it wasn't out yet. That's a cruncher. Yeah. Plus, there's also some other new, new, newer products coming out that uh, potentially could be, you know, to deal with the polyester stuff. But anyway, that's cool. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I, don't, I didn't, I haven't lost very much business. I've gained more business because um, just the word of mouth where I am. I don't spend a lot of money on re uh, advertising, mm -hmm. uh, and the money I do, it's, it's, it's. Um, forget the newspaper. I never get anything out of there. It's waste. <laughs> Yellow page, heard, forget it. Everybody's on the internet, so I just. I've heard sure some folks present. have have had uh, good luck with uh, um, radio ads, actually, that uh, because it's because radio is very local and the, the printing business is very local too. So it you know it has really broad reach and people are listening in their cars all the time. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I know you have uh, uh, had great success with your Facebook page. Um, I actually want to cover that in a slide here. Let me let me move forward here if I can. Uh, not drawing mode. I mean, if you, anybody's, you know, if you're familiar with Facebook and pages, it's 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 an amazing tool. Mm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, we um, 
re strongly recommend Facebook. In fact, I have a whole other presentation where I talk about marketing tactics and marketing strategies. And enhancing your website is fine. Um, here's, this is an example of something that you can do to enhance an existing website. If you don't already have one, uh, you can use it as your main product website, um, and that is to use Inksoft. And it's a way to put uh, um, your own uh, t-shirt shop online, essentially putting uh, your type, your images, your customers' images. Uh, you can customize it uh, all you want to for up to four customers. And the, the license is free. And um, yeah, this is a stripped down version of the full, the full Inksoft application. And then the subscription is $149 a month for Inksoft. And some, some customers get a lot of business out of this. Some customers say, I'm, I, I get referral business because of it and they actually come to me and, and hand me the order in, in person or they hand me their files on a thumb drive instead of building an image online and ordering it online. That's fine too. So it's a really good uh, investment either way. It can help you uh, uh, grow the awareness. But the Facebook is one way that's you know essentially free way to grow your business as well. So let me, let me run through something real quick here. There's one other thing I wanted to show you guys. And it's this one over here, uh, the where to start. So um, let me launch this one back up here. Because we were talking about um, business models and um, how to make sure that you know, as a, uh, an imaging business, you can, you can add the product line and still keep it profitable. So, so going into some of the basics that you need to price for profit, and some of our customers are reluctant to actually price for what the product's worth. So if you're looking at screen printing, for example, it doesn't seem to be like it's a very high margin business, and it isn't. Screen printing is a volume business, and Andy can attest to this. Um, uh, you know, I mean, you've done wholesale orders too, so you know that the higher the volumes, then the, the more the pricing pressure kicks in. Yeah, I, I had a job, matter of fact, for a national company, um, a conservative group, really doesn't matter who it is. But anyway, I had a uh, t-shirt order for 100 shirts, I priced it out at um, 9 bucks a shirt, and it literally took me about an hour and a half to do the job. So. If you look at it based on an hourly rate, I did. I think it did pretty well. A few hundred bucks an hour. Can't complain about that. So <laughs> it, you have to really focus on when you price this stuff out. If it's a one or two, you got you know you got your you know there is really the setup is taking their customer's art file and exporting it to a proper file format that the Ripple that the Ripple work with PNG, JPEG, TIFF, whatever. Mm -hmm. I generally use PNG files because they're transparent. Mm -hmm. um, for the white underbase, if I'm doing a dark garment. If I can get ready to do a sweatshirt in a little bit, then it costs me, the sweatshirt was 12 bucks, and I'm you know, getting 35 bucks for it. So oh, it's, oh. it's a, it's a one-off, and it's really, the prep time is next to none, because yeah. I've already had the customer, it's a repeat job. So yeah. I put it on and do it, so but it works nice out. Make, that's a nice way to make 20 bucks in 10 minutes. Yeah. And you know, and, and that figure I gave you guys a little bit ago about the 104 and 1,200 and 12,400 shirts that comes out to about about eight dollars and thirty cents average, right? And where that it's kind of a little bit misleading because mm -hmm. there was quite a few jobs that I did um, uh, three four hundred shirts that I didn't mm -hmm. supply the shirts, so there was a price right, charge right. of four or five bucks. Mm -hmm. Per shirt, so you know it's fifteen hundred dollars, and I didn't even have to buy the shirt. I'm just paying for the ink and labor that's involved. That's awesome. That's so awesome. it's it, there's so many different ways you can do this, um, mm -hmm. and and what Joe said about you know sending out a shirt. I just did a job for a customer for a, a rehab place. He walks in. I goes, Oh, I didn't know you do t-shirts, and I basically threw in that three shirts into a sign that I just basically installed up the road. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm going to get a bunch of repeat business out of that. So I just generated more business out of that one little company just for doing t-shirts. That's awesome. That's, that, that, that goes hand in hand. When, when folks are going to do this exclusively, uh, and a, a lot of folks do, 
they use this exclusively as their, their sole means of income is driving a, a directed garment business, they have to sample. And uh, um, if you already have an imaging business, you've already got a great customer base to start from that you just you know, send a postcard out, send an email, and uh, put it on your Facebook page that now you can do shirt prints, and they will come out of the woodwork like crazy. Um, but they only do it if, you know, if, if you're willing to, to hand out samples and get people excited about it. Um, if you're not driving people to your shop where they can actually see the images, then you've got to get out there and you've got to reach out to them first. Yeah, and a sample is um, going to cost you basically uh, a Gildan 2000 from SNS Activewear out of Chicago. It's going to cost you a buck 52, I think it is. Oh, that's a good and point. basically the ink is going to cost you about 30, 40 cents on a full coverage uh, image. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to cost you under, you know, it's going to cost around two, two and a quarter. And if, you know, you got someone doing it, you, you know, you're putting in another few, another buck or two. So, I mean, we're averaging just out over hours, not just one shirt. You know, you're going to try to do this, get them all done, or even send out sample shirts with a company name on it, you know, free advertising that you do shirts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> pardon me. Well, you mentioned uh, Gildan. <coughs> pardon me. Um, there's a few other uh, shirt vendors out there that, um, for somebody who's new to the, the, the garment business entirely, there's a few others that we um, strongly recommend you look at. And one of them is uh, Spectra. Mm -hmm. Spectra is a, a small company. Uh, it's up and coming. And it's based in Chino, California, but they ship all over the U.S. Uh, we use their blanks religiously because they produce the best, the best graphics, in my experience. And we've also used Delta Apparel and All Style, SNS and Hanes. Uh, we've used Gildan in the past. So this is just a very short list of, of different uh, vendors out there. Um, and you know, be candid with me. What have you seen uh, as far as have you tested out the DTG Ready shirts, the pre-treated ones? Yeah, I got my own. I got my. I got a. I got my own. I got a Viper. So, oh, part, okay. <laughs> part of part part of doing so well, I ended up spending uh, three or four, I think it was thirty nine ninety five for a pre treat machine. So yep. I mean, I, I'm able to do pre treat a hundred shirts in an hour. The That's pre treat awesome. is for the white ink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do it in an hour, and you know, it's not costing me. The, the difference is, I guess, it comes down to. If if you want to do your own pre-treating, I don't do a ton of blacks. I do mm -hmm. just about every color other than black. I you mm -hmm. know, pink, Carolina blue, royal blue, red, yellow, Vegas gold, brown, you name it. Wow. Uh, pistachio. You know, I don't n normally do a whole lot of blacks. Occasionally I do, but mm -hmm. um, for me, I just needed I needed to do that just to keep my volume up. So yep. it was well worth the investment to, yep. to do it. I mean, it's a big price tag, but when you look at the grand picture, it, it yeah. pays for itself pretty quickly. Well, and, and I think that that's the thing that, that uh, we appreciate uh, about so much about folks who already own businesses is that they already have been in it for a while, and they have a big picture uh, view of things. And they look at the long run. What's, what's, the, what's the turnaround you know, on, on my investment? and uh, will this machine run for three years, four years, five years? Uh, and when they look at the, the the hard cold numbers and they look at their customer base, it's usually a slam dunk uh, decision. Uh, so the the Viper pretreatment machine is a great investment. Like Andy says, if you're going to be doing stuff that is, uh, you're going to be doing a lot of bright colors. A pretreatment machine is is essential. Uh, um, some folks get by really well, though, with a Wagner power sprayer. Yep. Um, and they avoid that investment. But um, if you want to keep it very self-contained and you don't have a lot of uh, outdoor space to, to, to run problem. to do pretreatment, yeah, yeah. And if you have to, you know, have to do it in, inside of uh, closed doors uh, without a lot of ventilation, you might want to look at a pretreatment device instead. There's some other um, vendors on here that we are big fans of. For good graphics, if you look at Great Dane Graphics, I highly recommend them. Action Illustrated has thousands and thousands of color separated illustrations. That can be very handy uh, if you're uh, 
if you're designing original graphics and you've some, got something that has color separation, you can switch off going from direct to garment over to screen printing and back if you want to. Um, Andy, I think uh, you told me, and this is completely cool in kosher to share with everybody, that you're actually now uh, looking at investing in a uh, rotary screen press because your yeah, is taken I, off. Yeah, it, it has, and that's exactly what I, I actually just, I actually am sitting right at it. It's a Riley Hopkins six, six color four station with a tunnel dryer, and the tunnel dryer comes in handy for pre-tree too, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the reason why I ended up doing that is because I'm starting to get volume business now. I'm starting to deal with uh, customers that I'm doing uh, really super down and dirty, dark garments, you know, schools and stuff that don't want to spend a lot of money. And they um, don't come to you with single color and two color images. Correct. And you're dealing Very with, you know, two, three hundred shirts. Mm -hmm. and, and just, um, it's, that's the, it's just the, the difference between the two the two in nature, um, mm -hmm. the ink costs are, are drastically different. They just are. It's just the nature of the beast. Of course um, it is. So yeah. I'm able, I, mean, I was able to go ahead and purchase that. So it basically covers 100% of the screen printing market. Now, am mm -hmm. I going to get into thousands of shirt runs? I doubt it. You're talking auto press now, which is a total yeah. nether, nether, you know, maybe I'll get to that one day. Who knows? <laughs> But it was just basically uh, being able to compete with some of the screen printers um, and doing those things based on, um, you know, the lower margins. I mean, the lower yep. margins are you just have to make sure you're making your hourly, hourly uh, wage, mm -hmm. you know. And with screen printing, you can, you can achieve that and do really simple work. And and I, I'm doing it in conjunction with the direct garment because there, I've got uh, a customer that, uh, you know, I'm dealing with direct garment pricing, 50 shirts and under, and then once we hit the 50% mark and go up, it's our 50 shirt and mark go up, screen printing is more economical. I'm talking dark, dark shirts with white ink. Right, 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 right. So it was just basically, you know, something I, you know, I just, just had to make that basically investment. So it's just it's just the nature of uh, my growth and where I, where I'm headed. That's awesome. And 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 now now picture picture yourself uh, going back uh, um, to early 2012. Did you ever think that you were going to be driving fifty thousand and you know dollars in revenue off of a, a you know garment printing? No. <laughs> I was thinking maybe more in a, in a twenty to thirty. You know, I was hoping to pay it off in a year. Um, <laughs> but the, you know, quite honestly, you know, that's the, the the whole decision to go to the ten came from basically being able to take the profit and just roll it right into it. Yeah, that that that, that was actually a, a very cool story. Be, you know, just the fact that you took your profits um, from the volume or from the the business that you did on on the first generation. To invest in the in the in the upgrade to the the six print heads, yeah, I thought that was great. Um, let's let me click through this one. Um, well, I already kind of covered this, but um, it's important to note that if you uh, are looking at a directed garment investment, that you have a dedicated shop space for it. And there's a problem with this picture. Um, if you can see, the heat press is on the same exact table right next to the printer. That's actually a no-no. You do not want to have the 356 degree iron uh, with dry hot air pouring off of it right next to your um, uh, your industrial strength uh, print heads. Well, know? I can't tell. I can't tell a lie. I did that for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> that was my backup. Yeah. That was my backup heat press. <laughs> Yeah, so it's very important, and, and you could attest to this, uh, I'm sure, that if you if you don't have a good steady degree of humidity and you're running an inkjet machine, uh, you wind up with evaporation and dehydration on your print heads. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you don't have an HVAC uh, out, you know, um, uh, you don't want to have an air conditioner blowing right on uh, onto your printer um, or too close to it. And uh, you're also going to need to carve out a little bit of space for doing pretreatments uh, and just for storing all your blank shirts, too. But it doesn't take up a ton of space. This is another customer called Lone Mountain Printing. Um, 
trying to remember if they're in Colorado or Montana. Um, but uh, these guys are uh, having great success with their machine as well. Um, and they're also a commercial printer. Um, something I recommend is if you're in a, uh, uh, an area with a lot of business, a lot of different um, screen printing business and imaging businesses, it actually you know, is um, helpful if you actually get to know who they are because they're going to be able to sometimes back you up. Suppose you want to take a vacation. I don't know how you handle that, Andy, but if you want to take a vacation, you're going to need to, to um, hand off um, possibly some customers or some orders to somebody that you trust to get the job done right. So um, I don't know how you, how you partner with screen printers in your area, Andy. Did I, did I just lose you? You there? Sorry. Oh, yeah, OK. I um, wanted to ask how, how you partner with uh, um, competitors or co-opetition in your area. Uh, well, what I've done actually, I haven't. I'm probably getting ready to do it because I've got to um, upgrade something, so I'm going to probably be down for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I've been dealing with a couple of customers across uh, Virginia. Matter of fact, when they've had to go through the uh, M, M series, went through a series of upgrades, so these guys mm -hmm. had to send all their printers back mm -hmm. and. Quite honestly, I picked up quite a bit of business just basically um, sending the garments to me, and they were drop shipping the garments to me. I'd print their stuff and send it out to them, and then they'd give it to the customer. Mm -hmm. So, it you know, with this device, I mean, I tell you what, it's a pretty tight knit community because um, a lot, mm -hmm. you know, I picked up a fair amount of business that way. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, I got a company up in Pennsylvania that was looking at it. He hasn't decided what he's going to do, but he sent me quite a few jobs already. Uh, wow. he, he's a screen printer and a really large uh, sign shop. Okay. Well, so, so if anybody's listening on the call and they're thinking about it, you can send your jobs to Andy in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Nothing like more. Uh, nothing like more work. Um, <laughs> That's great. <coughs> Pardon me. That's like a good problem, but yeah, it, it, it's it's. Uh, I haven't had any issues dealing with um, sending out. Now I got a, I got a buddy across the bay that has uh, uh, what's he got? A 20, 24, 24 head rot, rot, It's one of the biggest in the Mid Atlantic uh, rotary press. Mm -hmm. So if I ever have to get into, you know, quoting on a big job. You know, I can always give him a call, and he'll he'll take that no problem. You know, and and run with it, and of course it'll run through me, so I'll get whatever profit he you know on top of what he's charging me. Mm -hmm. So that's dealing with a, a large volume screen printer. Mm -hmm. So I do have so, my connections if I need them. So um, you've been building your business uh, primarily really using social media and a you know, Facebook page. And this is kind of the gospel that uh, I've been preaching for over a year now is to say you really do need to have a Facebook page. We have some customers who build, who build their business and do their marketing exclusively on Facebook now because it's, it's local. It's all the people that you know. It, you, you invite all your customers to, to, to watch it. And it's just a passive way of, of getting updates and pictures of uh, printed jobs in front of people all the time. Well, yeah, so not only that, it also gives them a better idea of what even, you know, most people don't even understand what half the time we do, even on science shops. You know, it's like, oh, I didn't know you can do, uh, you know, these plastic yard signs or, you know, or canvas prints or product labels. I mean, I got a print and cut device that I do about ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 worth of product labels. Mm -hmm. For you know, local guys. So, putting that out there, it always it, it basically just reminds them or sets off a little signal saying, "Oh, I didn't know you could do that." You know, pop-up mm -hmm. banners, uh, anything like that. I just did a big thing for a local merchant who's basically does makes her own jewelry and sells them nationwide. She's a fairly large outfit, and I just did her whole trade show booth for down in uh, this trade show was in Florida somewhere and mm -hmm. basically that I posted that on my website it was a, a bunch of stuff from a sign on Centra to a smooth banner material to um, I can't remember half the stuff I did from but mm -hmm. there was just just a bunch of stuff that was all incorporated that I ended up doing it was just like almost like a snapshot to a degree of 
a partial partial amount of stuff that I've done. So putting T-shirts on there and tagging tagging is the critical thing. It's tagging the person that you did it for. Um, mm -hmm. And generally, I go out if I'm not they're not my friends. They're going to be my friends, and basically I turn <laughs> and tag them. Um, just I picked up a, the Nature Conservancy just mm -hmm. the other day, doing a local version of it, um, doing banners for them just based upon Facebook. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so so you know, working with folks in the community on a regular basis. Um, you get invited, and this is something that some of our customers have done, where they actually go out and they take, take, they put their printer into a van along with a heat press and go hit an event. But have you been uh, asked to to provide for diff these different types of activities and organizations? Like yeah, I won't, like, I, won't, I won't go to the, the length of throwing it in my truck and driving it around because some proximity. I've you know we've got the town of the town of Cape Charles actually had just moved just to the outside of it because there was no no space for me mm -hmm. uh, to move into a larger place. Mm -hmm. um, we there's weekly events during the during the, the summer months because this is mm -hmm. a transient area. So you know we've got runs, we've got oyster roasts, we've got uh, festivals, fall festival. Uh, picnic in the park, just all sorts of these big events. Uh, there's a Gravity Blues Festival for the, uh, a local school. And I end up doing pretty much all their stuff. And I'll get the order, like, literally three or four days before the event. Oh, oh um, boy. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the lead time. you got to love it. But you know what? <laughs> it, yeah, and it's not that big of a deal because to get that kind of stuff out, you're not going through and fighting, setting up, setting up screens and all this other stuff. It was easy just to generate, you know, 100 shirts I can get done. You know, even a less experienced operator, I can get done 100 shirts in two hours. You know, mm -hmm. paying, you know, 10 bucks an hour, it's, it's there's still money to be made, even at, oh, yeah. even at 12 bucks a shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And then they turn they turn around and retail it or sell it on off the street for whatever they can get for it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I, we've we've used up more than our full hour, so um, I'm going to cut us off here. And uh, again, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak today to um, the folks on the call. And uh, we're going to record this and have this posted up to our website for everybody to see. Um, and if you have any questions, um, anybody out there uh, want to follow up with us after the call, you can uh, email me, jl at anajet.com, or you can hit our blog or our request info form. Uh, most, most likely you've already completed that. Um, if you are working with the regional manager already or you, you've talked with somebody here, um, feel free to follow up with them directly. Uh, we're going to have a, a more detailed webinar uh, covering the Empower series, uh, the I series, we did at the beginning of every month, um, and we archived that, so you can get more technical information on it there. And we're going to be presenting at SGIA Expo in Orlando uh, in just a couple weeks, and I'm flying there myself. And you'll be you'll be able to find us pretty easily. Look for the the Anajet banner. Um, and Andy, yes. once again, thank you very much. No problem. All right. And uh, I'll be talking to you soon, and uh, thank you very much, folks. Goodbye. Bye.